on behalf of i am vishakhapatnam i want to formally extend my heartfelt gratitude to esteemed guest honorable union minister of state for finance dr bhagwat karad ji faculty member alumni and last but not least the student fraternity of i am vishakhapatnam vriddhi envisions bringing together the current and upcoming thought leaders to promote innovative insights and deep dive into industry know how in line with the annual theme normalizing digitalization disruption and development the summit incorporates panel discussions keynote addresses workshops and several b school competition although the new normal brought about the paradigm shift in the way the event are organized i am vishakhapatnam has kept up the times through its series of leadership webinar in the build up of this year's conclave the business cluster of i am vishakhapatnam is extremely honored to host the eminent dr bhagwat karad ji today from his humble beginning dr bhagwat karad ji through the sheer hard work dedication and perseverance has contributed immensely towards improving the life those around him he began his journey in medicine by enrolling at dr baba saheb ambedkar marathwada university aurangabad and thus paved a way for himself and laid the foundation of his eminent journey for transformation sir's foray into politics has its origin into social activism he later contested and was elected as a deputy mayor of aurangabad municipal corporation in 1997 not long after in the year 2000 he became the mayor for the first time and held the position across two different tenures in aurangabad he had been instrumental as house leader of bjp in respect of municipal corporation currently sir is serving as a union minister of finance for and he is a member of rajya sabha for the state of maharashtra he was also served as a member of parliamentary standing committee of petroleum and natural gas and consultative committee of power new and renewable energy he is one of the most qualified member of the serving union cabinet while still continuing with his medical practice over a four decades for today a keynote address we have with us the designated moderator professor kalyan who did his fellowship program from i am bangalore he his area of expertise lies in empirical evaluation of public support and program currently he is engaged in study of program related to health and empirical understanding of nature of risk and insurance of household now i would like to hand over to professor kalyan for the welcome note over to you professor okay uh, good afternoon uh, everyone uh firstly thank you shoaib for a very generous introduction uh firstly i'm very happy and elated for the privilege to welcome our distinguished guest and keynote speaker for this session honorable union minister of state finance dr agavat karad ji to the annual business summit of iim vishakhapatnam named briddhi uh, which is hosting events this year under the theme that is titled normalizing digitalization disruption and development so i on behalf of the iim vishakhapatnam family extend our sincere and heartfelt welcome to you sir for having graced this occasion despite your rather packed schedule i am also happy to welcome our distinguished faculty members and energetic and eager students and any of our support staff who are attending this summit the topic of this keynote session is on strategies for business to thrive in a post pandemic world so coming from the area of economics which i teach here our perception has been that the pandemic has fundamentally altered how businesses might be run both now in the present and in the future in economics we sometimes refer to it technically as the structural break in the economic uh, models or economic activity of a country now scholars and practitioners have been suggesting various points that will let firms succeed in a post pandemic world now i have been fortunate to read a 
Harvard Business Review article by Jonathan Burns and uh, uh, John Wass, one of whom teaches at Strategy at MIT, who emphasize that the pa post pandemic firms have to focus more on segment segmentation of customers, as well as focus on sustainability, focus on digital uh, technologies and sharing of computational space in the cloud, as well as cultivating talent and need for speed, and also build in purpose to whatever they do. So the field is very ripe and is uh, sub and we are very eager to listen to Dr. Bhagavadji on this matter. So once again, let me warmly welcome you, sir. And uh, uh, I now pass on the mic to you. Namaste. Hope you all are staying safe and taking precautions during this third wave of COVID-19. Greetings to Professor Dr. Kalyan Kolukuluri. Kolukuluri, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kolukuluri, that is right. Sir. Yes, yes. Thank sir. You. Mr. Patel Soeb. Business Secretary, Students Affair Council, and other professors and students joining us today. I am delighted to be part of the Vraddhi event successfully organized by the IM Vishaka Patnam. The topic which was given from your side is business strategies in the post pandemic world at IM Vishakapatnam. COVID-19 pandemic is a one in central global humanization and economic crisis. Under the able leadership of our Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji, our central government focused on the human principles advocated by the Mahabharata, which read Saving life, that is the problem, is the origin of dharma. Our initiatives have therefore first focused on saving lives by incorporating quick responses in the healthcare segment during the pandemic and then responding to the business shocks and disruptions. I want to say that the steps taken by Honorable Prime Minister and the central government and different state government to save the life and, and then the business and all other things. Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji, his strong and quick decision saved many lives from the start with the introduction of the most stringent lockdown in 2020 this not only helped flatten the curve, but gave necessary time to ramp up the infrastructure and healthcare facilities. One of the most successful nations is striking the balance between lives and livelihoods. If you remember the condition in that time, there were no beds, no oxygens, and not only though, no ventilators. So the lockdown has helped us to build the infrastructure of our country in the health region. Needless to mention, the pandemic has naturally brought economic stress on many. It increased uncertainty, lowered confidence, and fear of contagion caused by the precautionary savings and risk aversion in business. This is leading to a sharp drop in investment, some initial low and a shock in supplies also. Non-essential good sectors were severely affected, especially the contact sensitive sectors such as tourism, hospitality, transport, 
it has caused further loss of livelihood and struggle indirect impact of the non essential goods sectors also caused shock on essential goods sector smaller businesses unrecognized vendors and workers were left struggling for survival the construction and mining sectors that employ a larger share of informal workers had been severely affected during the pandemic 2019 to counter the situation on 12th may 2020 our honorable finance minister shrimati nirmala sitaraman ji announced rupees 20 trillion stimulus packages equivalent to 10% of the gdp in monetary and physical measures to counter the pandemic msmes suffered from declining revenues and capacity utilization due to the cash crunch lack of labor availability and downfall downfall in valuation of collaterals given for loans already taken under the guidance of our our uh, honorable prime minister sri narendra modi ji the government launched multiple schemes to add the msmes and further their growth and development under the atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan such as 20000 crore subordinate debate for msmes alongside the rupees 3 lakh crore collateral free automatic loans our government also infused rupees 50000 crore worth of equity through msme fund of funds rbi also announced measures to reduce financial stress for msmes in short the central government has taken the lot of steps and poor lot of money to overcome the difficulties in msmes the emergency credit line guarantee scheme this is a very important scheme started by the finance ministry the government initiated emergency credit line guarantee scheme which aim providing 100% guarantee coverage to banks for emergency credit to msmes the 20% the loan was given without any collateral guarantee so this is a very important scheme to save the msmes the scheme succeeded saving around 13.5 lakh companies from going bankrupt saved around 1.5 crore lakh jobs and prevented 40% msme loans from turning into nps this is very important step happened because of the eclgs scheme while the pandemic imposed enormous challenges on the business organizations india needed to search new and innovate models during this time the government launched the aspire initiative to set up network of technology centers and incubation centers to further strengthen the competitiveness in the msme sector additionally the government has launched jed certification scheme to enable manufacturing of quality productivity by including zero defect and zero effect practices ensure continuous improvement thereby supporting the make in india initiatives in order to create manufacturing champions and generate employment opportunities for the country's youth honorable finance minister nirmala sitaraman ji announced an outlay of rupees 1.97 lakh crore for production linked initiatives it is very important schemes across 13 k sectors including k starting materials drug intermediates and active pharmaceutical ingredients medical devices 
लार्ज स्केल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड टेक्नोलॉजी प्रोडक्ट्स एडवांस केमिकल सेल बैटरीज हाई इफिशियंसी सोलार पीवी मॉडल्स दीज आर द टोटल थर्टीन नंबर वेर द प्रोडक्ट लिंक स्कीम वॉज स्टार्टेड इन दिन दीज थर्टीन प्रोडक्ट्स our honorable prime minister gave as a mantra of governance that mantra is very important it is reform perform transform accordingly business needed to be agile enough to quickly change or adapt in response to the tumultuous and rapidly changing market in order to thrive in the post pandemic period organization agility encompasses two major dimensions speed and stability is important speed makes a business quick and responsive in keeping with the changing times this includes being innovative and dynamic in its thinking and actions stability is what ensures the sustainability and ability of a business to succeed there is no doubt when i say that without transform we cannot perform and to transform and perform we need a reform so this mantra is very important that is reform perform and transform the pandemic has made us believe that collaboration collaboration and coordination are extremely essential india's growth in the coming times will need to be drive by successful partnership honorable prime prime minister modi ji invested that center state governments local bodies and the private sector should come together to devise solutions together and fast in various sectors keeping in mind the poor of the country moreover this will also help both government and private sector to incorporate skills and knowledge into projects for the public good post crisis a big and lasting change would be the alterations in our work flow and methods this requires management expertise to deal with the present situation prepare for and shape the new normal and create an inclusive environment and all employees across the country were under great pressure to keep them productive employees will be need to become much more aware on the other hand developing a crisis command center will be the critical organizing and overseeing the next wave of coordinated response efforts to help organizers recover the vital role of managers today should be the to combine machines and human resources get the best of both worlds in terms of efficiency and cost productivity and make enterprises strive in the post pandemic period so this is very important the role of management managers to take the maximum production from the machines prediction of demand planning supply chain via digitalization has become easier and accurate this end to end technology if facilitated to msmes will help them bounce back acting as a catalyst for economic growth therefore we should adopt digital world with open arms india was little affected by the forceful shift to technology our digital revolution was nearly 5 to 6 years ahead we released the digital indian initiatives such ar- much earlier as demonetization help reduce the, to reduce the dependence on cash and shifted to cashless economy it is thus evident that digitalization has enabled the informal sector which accounts for more than 80% of the workforce to join the formal economy 
under the digital india initiatives by our honorable prime minister direct beneficial transfer transfers was provided to be weaker section of the society through jam trinity this led to seamless supply of money for the basic necessities even to the remotest rural area this jam trinity is a invention in india only j stands for bandhan account a stands for aadhar and m starts for mobile jandan account was linked to the aadhar card and both jandan account aadhar card are linked to the mobiles so due to this it was easy to transfer the money from the center to the remote place for the different beneficiaries hyper local marketplace and omni channels have changed the way how you want the rural population look at e commerce today by marrying the convenience of the online shopping with the comfort and trust factor of a neighborhood brick and mortal store these marketplace have become the answer to the online shopping concerns of the country's decentering consumer base today across all industries digitalization should not be seen as a acceptable solution to the problem but rather grounds to change the business model creativity for the better our honorable prime minister while addressing the inauguration at the infancy forum said finance is the life blood of an economy and technology is its career career both are equally important for achieving antodaya and sarodaya fintech industry in india is innovating to enhance access to finance and the formal credit system to smes i firmly believe that fintech can act as a catalyst in the growth of the smes as a technology holds to no, no job no bias and so small businessman can benefit from technological ad advancements as much as the big names in the industry this pandemic area this pandemic arena has made us realize the need for local capacities in terms of laboratories infrastructure and experts in order to respond effectively to similar future outbreaks i want to make another important point while government concentrate on mitigating the highest level of health and economic shocks social entrepreneurs innovate solutions for the secondary and tertiary challenges of the pandemic ranging from employment to education i therefore urge aims to promote social entrepreneurship in our young aspirants despite the global pandemic i am quite optimistic that this decade and the century belong to the creation of new multinationals in india this is the best period for india to show showcase its potential in world as our honorable prime minister said today start ups are the multinationals of tomorrow's all the young colleagues of i am visakhapatnam and others how to discover new and innovative solutions to make the local products global to become the torch bearer of swadesh enterprises i am confident that our i am scan work as a bridge between local products and international collaboration towards the country's self reliant mission companies that follow this strategy will thrive in an unstable environment as much as in quite one as we all begin to emerge from this pandemic context we have the opportunity to rebuild a new economy more inclusive more resilient 
fairer and more efficient for all of us. Digitalization has an important role to play and enables of new business models as factor to foreign investment and as engines of innovation. By applying the above takeaways, we believe all companies can contribute to a better global system and deliver, and deliver a truly new world model for the future of the industry. With these uh, remarks, I congratulate all the students and all the professors from Vishakapatnam for organizing such a nice, uh, I can say, seminar and discussing what are the strategies for the, the businessmen after pandemic of the COVID. Now see, this is the third wave, although this third wave is in going on the India, but it is a not so harmful as it was in problem in the first and the second wave. And I am sure that with all the precautions will come out of the third wave and the, this sector, particularly MSME sector in India will come uh, with larger in increase in the business, increase in the economy. Just I want to tell you, the economy is increasing very fast. The, our goal was to achieve 1 lakh crore, 1 lakh, sorry, 1 lakh thousand crore. Huh? 1 lakh crore. 1 lakh crore as a GST. It was our per month. But, but now we have gone up to the 1 lakh and 31,000 crore. So our economy is increasing. So with this, the governments, central government, state government, I will say, and all the entrepreneurs, MSME people, they are working very hard to come out of this uh, effects of the pandemic and I hope we will come out of it with this uh, short address. I will say I thanks the organizers for inviting me for this uh, program and I am always with you in future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for that illuminating uh, talk. Um, if I may, if you if, if you if you indulge me, uh, you have touched upon uh, uh, many important points. The key points being that the uh, that the role of government is is uh, is still um, uh, very much important. The the policies that the government has designed, particularly in preventing bankruptcies in promoting partnerships uh, of the sort where private and public entity entities work together and the emphasis on uh, reform so that we can perform and transform uh, are truly are truly things that every entrepreneur should take to heart and uh, you the I, and the important point that you mentioned is we should we should uh, embrace digitalization with open arms which i think every business leader and every uh, scholar in this country will readily agree to. You also mentioned that technology is the carrier of the lifeblood of finance, uh, lifeblood, uh, which, which, which can be uh, finance. That is, that is truly also a very uh, 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 a thought that, will, uh, that should be imbibed by a lot of people. So um, with that, uh, I will now uh, request you uh, to see if you will uh, address a couple of questions that uh, some of our participants have sent on the topic of uh, on on the topic on which you spoke, which is strategies for businesses to thrive in a post-COVID world. Um, and the, uh, if you, if I may, uh, the first question is: uh, the students want to know what, according to you. Uh, because you have been an entrepreneur yourself as well as a public uh, uh, servant. What would be the five key learnings from this pandemic for businesses so as to plan and strategize for their future? If, in your own words, sir. five key learnings from this pandemic for businesses to plan and strategize for their future. See, 
as uh, I said, the reform, perform, and transform is uh, very important to develop the business. And the five keys which you ask for the business are very important that I want to tell you. Be adaptive, be agile, then uh, collaboration, digitalization and innovation. These are the five things important to, to be a successful businessman. And I hope with these five things, the business, the, anybody can be a, have a successful business. Okay, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you for that. And as a follow-up question, uh, the students also would, would uh, uh, want to hear your opinion about what should entrepreneurs focus uh, as an area to develop uh, uh, their business in the post-COVID scenario? Um, and what should be their strategy as entrepreneurs who are, uh, who are starting on a new business uh, idea? Uh, See, uh, the entrepreneurs who are starting new business, of course, the economy is uh, important. Means economical gain, means uh, profit, banks, and these are the important. But at the same time, we have to have an ecosystem, sustainable ecosystem. We have to develop the relations with the different stakeholders. Then, the particularly in the pandemic, we have seen the post effect of this pandemic was we have started work from the home, training from the home, digitalizations. These are the things very important in the post-COVID scenario and developing the business. It's starting working from the home, training from the home, digitalizations. These are the important things, I think. Thank you again, sir. Um, so, if uh, so, the so thank you very much again. I think we have some takeaways, and you also mentioned uh, an interesting uh, aspect of uh, uh, that you would uh, request IAMs. Uh, you mentioned uh, to focus on social entrepreneurship, which we will certainly, which we are to that extent, we are actually uh, our students do courses concerning that, concerning co the interaction between business, government, and society. And also in many of their courses that they take, they are exposed to the idea of social entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship in itself is another uh, core course that uh, our students make. We will certainly see how to uh, uh, incorporate social entrepreneurship, particularly in our curriculum, as well as in our research agendas. Um, so with that, uh, sir, I thank you very much again for your time. And I will now see if, if uh, the business secretary or any of the students have any question or comment uh, that you might want uh, to ask Dr. Bhagwadji. Uh, Shoeb? Yes, sir. I would yeah. take over. Okay. Sharwari. Okay. Um, Sharwari, do you have a question or do you want to uh, thank... Uh, our uh, guest speaker and keynote speaker, Dr. Bhagwaji, what do you want to? Uh, I uh, want to deliver. I am supposed to deliver. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Then, uh, firstly, let me thank you again, and we have uh, Sharwari Shirke, uh, who will uh, formally uh, speak, give a valedictory speech or a thank you speech uh, before we conclude this session. Okay, Sharwari, over to you. Yes. All right. So let me take this opportunity to deliver the vote of thanks for today's keynote session. At the end of it, I, Sharwari Shirke, on behalf of IIM Vishakha Patnam's business cluster, extend a hearty vote of thanks for this keynote session with Dr. Bhagwat Karag, Honorable Union Minister for State of Finance, and our wonderful moderator, Professor Kalyan Kolukuluri, on strategies for businesses to thrive in a post-pandemic world. I wholeheartedly thank our guest, Dr. Bhagwat Karad, and our moderator, Professor Kalyan, for making this event a huge success. The overall discussion has been very enriching and thought-provoking for all the students of IIM Vishakha Patnam 
with all the valuable takeaways we can keep pondering upon. Now, since the success of no program can be attributed to a single person, I extend my gratitude to the administration of IIM Vishakhapatnam and the student fraternity for making this event a grand success. And last but not the least, thanks to all the wonderful and patient audience for joining us here on this beautiful day. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks a lot. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.